Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Good to be now the Lord. Amen. Amen. Fix my mic real quick. Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not worthy to be up here speaking, but please send the Holy Spirit so that I speak your words and your words only. Open up our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may receive fresh breath from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. amen. So the message I have for us today is the starving church. You know, originally I was going to talk on Revelation 12 today, but I felt this message was more important because we need to be on a certain spiritual food experience as we prepare others for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 6 and verse 47. Oh, great. The point is working this time. John chapter 6 and verse 47. And this was also part of your bulletin. And the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, hath everlasting life. I am the bread of that life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh. I will give this for the life of the world. Are we ready for some fresh bread from heaven today, my brothers and sisters? Fresh bread that coming down from heaven, the flesh, the word of God, the Bible that we are re reading today. Like I said, we need to be on a certain spiritual food experience, but we need to learn from the experience of the Israelites. So let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's see what Brother Paul has to say. Say amen if you're there. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and starting at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. That, was, that rock was Christ. So who was the cloud that was following the Israelites? Jesus Christ. And they were spiritually baptized as they went through the sea. But in verse 5 it says, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And now these things were written for what? Our examples. We should learn from the example of the Israelites. Their experience is written for us today. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Let's look at verses 11 and 12. Now all these things happened to them for what? Our examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. So we are going to take a look at a certain experience of the Israelites when Moses brought them out of the land of Egypt. So let's turn our Bibles to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And what did God do when he asked Moses to lead the Israelites? out of the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible says, And God spake all these things, all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of what? Of bondage. See, God brought them out of the physical house of bondage, the land of Egypt. But here we are going to be talking about spiritual bondage. Are we not servants of sin at one point in our lives or another, brothers and sisters? Bondage actually means spiritual sin. And where does Christ talk about spiritual or being a servant to sin in the Bible? Let's look at John chapter 8. I hope we have our Bibles ready because we are going to be flipping through a lot of verses. John chapter 8 and verse 32. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And Jesus is talking to his disciples here. And ye shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you what? Free. What is the truth? The word of God, right? And they answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage. We are descendants of Abraham, my Lord, but we have never been slaves. How are you freeing us if we have never been physical slaves? Let's keep reading. We were never in bondage, verse 33, to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Spiritual bondage, my brothers and sisters. Spiritual slave to sin. And where was God leading the Israelites when they came out of Egypt? The land of Canaan, right? The promised land. And what did God promise the Israelites? A land flowing with milk and honey, right? A prosperous land. Let's look at it. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 24. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 24. We are just setting the foundation for the message today, my brothers and sisters. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. And the Bible says, But I have said unto you, Ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with what? Milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. So what is the land of milk and honey? It is a physically prosperous land, but the land of milk and honey is also a spiritual experience. I think my clicker stopped working. The land of milk and honey is a spiritual experience. And in it, there is actually three experiences, but we're going to focus on all three. But God says milk and honey. So there is a milk experience and there is a honey experience. And we're going to be looking at both experiences and what they mean from a spiritual aspect. So let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. And take a look at what it means to be on the milk experience. Hebrews chapter 5. And verse 11. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are what? Dull of hearing. For when the time ye ought to be teachers. How many of you have been baptized? Raise your hand if you have been baptized. Okay, put your hands down. I'm looking at you. For the time when ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be what? The first principles of the oracles of God, and as such have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses the milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Paul is not talking about physical babe. He is talking about a spiritual babe, a spiritual babe in Jesus Christ. But look at verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are what? Full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern what? Both good and evil. So what is the milk experience? Milk experience is unskilled in the word of the righteous. So why was God bringing the Israelites to the land of milk and honey? Were they unskilled in the word of righteous? Were they sinning in the desert? Can we go to the next slide, then, please? When Moses went up to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, the testimony of God, what did they ask Aaron to do? Build them idols. So why was God leading them to the land of milk and honey? Because they were still in spiritual bondage. They were still servants to sin. They were still on the milk experience. They were still babes in Christ. So even though God had brought them out of their physical bondage in Egypt, they were still slaves to sin. And that is part of the milk experience. And what are traits of the milk experience? Let's, let's look at what Paul has to say. In verse 11, dull of hearing. In verse 12, they should be teachers, but they need to be taught the first principles of God. In verse 13, people that everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. So which experience do we need to be on, our brothers and sisters? The strong meat experience. Those who are full of age and have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. So let's take a look at another example of the Israelites 
who were still in the milk experience. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verse 13. Matthew 13, verse 13. And actually, actually, let's look at verse 10 first. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And let's jump to verse 13. Jesus says, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because what? They seeing, they see not. They hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. In verse 15, For this people's heart is waxed gross. Their eyes are dull of hearing, their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So which experience were the Israelites on when Jesus came, my brothers and sisters? The milk experience. Last week in Sabbath school, we talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we were discussing how could the disciples not recognize that it was Jesus Christ that raised, raised from the grave? Because they were on the milk experience. They see, but see not. They hear, but they hear not. Jesus had to dumb down and speak in parables because they were on the milk experience. He could not preach them the truth straight because they were still spiritual infants. So what are characteristics? The spiritual infants, the people on the milk experience are what? Dull of hearing. There are the unconverted people. Traits such as jealousy, hate, prideful. They are still walking with flesh and not walking with Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at what Paul has to say about walking with flesh versus walking with Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto what? As unto carnal even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with what? Milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now ye are able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? So what is the milk experience? Walking with carnal. Paul could not give them the strong meat the strong meat experience because they were bathed in Christ. He had to feed them with the milk because they were still walking with man and not walking with Jesus Christ. Spiritually immature, acting according to the flesh. The people were so caught up with the flesh, the earthly things, he had to feed them with the milk, the basics, that they were not ready for the meat, the strong meat experience, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ wants to give to us. So, we talk about the milk experience and has all these different characteristics. Dull of hearing. You seeing, but you do not see. You hear, but you do not hear. But what is the point of the milk experience? Why do people need the milk experience, my brothers and sisters? Let's see what Peter has to say. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 1, and the Bible says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire what? The sincere milk of the word, that ye may what? Grow thereby. So what is the point of the milk experience? The sincere milk experience is the spiritual milk, the word of God, that you may grow spiritually mature onto the strong meat experience. So what are the churches preaching, my brothers and sisters? Are we going to keep preaching the milk, or are we going to keep pre preaching the strong meat experience? What is the point of the milk experience? Next slide. The milk experience. Can you go to the next slide? Yes. 
The milk experience leads you from a life of sin to a life of conversion. Leads you from walking with man to walking with Jesus Christ. But the point is, we must not live by the milk alone, my brothers and sisters. We need the strong meat of the word of God. Next slide. But strong meat, what did Hebrews chapter 5 say? Strong meat belongs to them that are what? Full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Why do we need our spiritual senses exercised, my brothers and sisters? We need our eyes and our ears and our heart spiritually open to Jesus Christ to discern the truth from the lies, to discern the seven-day Sabbath from the Sunday Sabbath, my brothers and sisters. You know what? Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verses 24. Say amen if you're there. And so Christ here is talking about the end times. And what does Jesus Christ say here in Matthew 24, verse 24? For there shall arise what? False Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive who? The very elect. Who are the very elect, my brothers and sisters? Us, the seven-day Adventist church, the remnant church of God. Might deceive some of us. Might deceive our brothers and sisters. The leadership, if we are on the milk experience, they seeing but see not and hearing but hearing not, how will they be able to tell the difference, my brothers and sisters? They need to be on the strong meat experience. Their senses exercised. We need to stop walking with man and start walking with Jesus Christ. Next slide. Spirit of Prophecy. First manuscript release. Page 33. Can you go next slide, please? Spirit of Prophecy. First manuscript release. Page 33, paragraph 4. And listen very carefully to sis what Sister White has to say. If those who have been in the church for weeks and months have not learned the straightness of the way and what it is to be Christians and cannot hear all the straight truths of the word of God, it were better that they were cut off from Israel. Mercy. But Brother Hardy, what about evangelism? If we are bringing people into the seven-day Adventist church, feeding them the sincere milk to baptizing them and still feeding them with milk, we are wasting their time. We need to feed them the strong meat experience after baptism, my brothers and sisters. Sincere milk to conversion, strong meat to prophesy the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading. What does Sister White say? It is too late to feed with milk. Is Jesus coming soon, my brothers and sisters? Too late to feed with milk, my brothers and sisters. If souls a month or two old in the truth who are about to enter the time of trouble such as never was cannot hear all the straight truths or endure what? The strong meat of the straightness of the way. How will they stand in the day of battle? Truths that we have been years learning must be learned in a few months by those who embrace the third angel's message. What is Sister White saying here? If we are bringing people into the church, we need to give them the sincere milk and cut them off and give them the strong meat experience because it is too late to feed with milk, my brothers and sisters. Too late to feed with milk. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Say amen if you're there. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. And the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also what? Reap. If we are constantly sowing the milk experience in the church, that is what we are going to reap. But if we are sowing the strong meat experience, we will reap that, my brothers and sisters. The milk does not give you faith. How can you gain faith in Jesus Christ if you are still walking with flesh? The meat gives you the strong faith, not the milk. You need to be walking with Jesus Christ, exercising your senses, discerning the truth from the lies so that you can be able to build your faith in Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. So that is the milk and the strong meat experience. So there is a time and place for the milk experience, and there is also a time and place for the strong meat experience. What is the other experience that God was going to bring the Israelites into? The honey experience. So let's look at a couple of verses in the Bible that talk about the honey experience. And what is the honey experience, my brothers and sisters? 
the Word of God. The enlightenment we receive as we read the Word of God. Is the Bible not sweet, my brothers and sisters? Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 13. Proverbs 24 and verse 13. Say amen if you're there. The Bible says, My son, eat thou honey, because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, and there shall be a, what? A reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. What is being talked about here? The knowledge of wisdom as we read the word of God. The honey book. And there shall be a reward. What is our reward, my brothers and sisters? Everlasting life that Jesus Christ has promised us. And our expectation shall not be cut off. Let's take a look at another verse in 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 24, or 27, sorry. And so Jonathan is tired from fighting the battle against the Philistines, right? So what would you do physically if you ate something sweet, right? It would give you a sugar rush. It would give you energy. Let's look at verse 27. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were what? Enlightened, bright, enlightened. Is that not the same experience we get when we read the word of God? Our eyes are enlightened. But if we are still knowingly on the milk experience, we cannot see. We seeing, but see not. But we need to be on the strong meat and the honey experience so that our eyes are enlightened as we read the word of God. I'm going to forego, forego the next uh, scripture, but you can write it down in your notes for reference. Psalm 19, verses 7 and 8. Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. And who knows what this passage is about right here? Revelation chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. Exact 1844. Amen, brother. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly what? Bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. And as soon as I eaten it, my belly was bitter. 1844, the great disappointment. William Miller and the Millerites, he was preaching the first angel's message in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. The message was sweet. He thought Jesus was coming to cleanse the earth, the 2,300-year prophecy. He got the time right, but the meaning was wrong. Jesus was going from the holy place to what? The most holy place. The message was sweet. They were all ready for Jesus Christ to come and save the people, but it was bitter in their belly when Jesus did not come. The great disappointment, brothers and sisters. And what were the honey books that William Miller was preaching from, our brothers and sisters? Daniel and Revelation. Those are the honey books in the Bible. Those are some sweet books if you read it, my brothers and sisters. Verse 11. What did he say? And he said unto me, thou must what? Prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So we need to prophesy again, my brothers and sisters, the second coming of Jesus Christ with the honey book, Daniel and Revelation, the Bible. Besides Jesus, there's one person that we need to follow, an example of in the Bible, who is giving people the sincere milk, the spiritual strong meat, and the honey experience. Who am I talking about, my brothers and sisters? John the Baptist. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And what was John doing? John was preparing the way for who? Jesus, the Lamb, to take away the world's sin. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, What? 
Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do we not need to do the same thing? Repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins. And what was his meat, my brothers and sisters? Locusts and what? Wild honey. Then went out to him in Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. The John the Baptist experience, my brothers, that is the experience that we need to be on today, preparing the way for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Did John the Baptist have disciples, my brothers and sisters? Yes, he was baptizing people, giving them the sincere milk so that they stopped walking with flesh and they started walking with Jesus Christ. And after he baptized them, he gave them the strong meat and made them into disciples so that they can go and witness to other people. Do we need to do the same thing today, my brothers and sisters? We need to be giving people the strong meat experience, the sincere um, milk and the honey experience. So what John lived is what John taught people. He was giving people the sincere milk and the strong meat experience. Did the leadership back then like what John was preaching? Did they throw him a parade, a festival? What happened to John? They beheaded him. Next slide. Spirit of Prophecy, Spiritual Gifts, Volume 2, page 284, paragraph 2. Preachers should have no scruples to preach the truth as it is found in what? God's word. Let the truth cut. I have been shown why ministers have not more success is they are afraid of hurting feelings fearful of not being courteous, and they lowered the standard of truth and concealed, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. Was John letting the truth cut, my brothers and sisters? He was not holding the word back. He was saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was giving people the strong meat experience. That is the truth, my brothers and sisters. We need to let the word of God cut. Do not let the false prophecies mingle with the truth of the word of God. So I'm talking a lot about spiritual meat. What is the spiritual meat that we need to be serving people, my brothers and sisters? Next slide. And I hope I don't need to pull Bible verses for these. Let's read them out. One number one, the second coming of Jesus, the three angels' messages. You're asking, where's investigative judgment? It's the number two, the sanctuary message, the 2,300-year prophecy. Number three, the seventh-day Sabbath. Does that say Sunday Sabbath? No, the seventh-day Sabbath. Number four, Spirit of prophecy. Number five, state of the dead. We have talked about that in Sabbath school this quarter. And what does number six and seven say? Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Supper. In Testimonies to the Church, volume six, page 91, paragraph one, Sister White quotes baptism and Lord's Supper as pillars of the seven-day Adventist church. Take a picture, write this down if you need to, my brothers and sisters. This is the spiritual meat that we need to be imparting to each other and to others as we prepare the way for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Next slide. So is the church ready for Christ? Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And the Bible says, say amen if you're there. Behold, I stand at the door and what? Knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and we will sup with him, and he with me. If you are a baby and you are being fed with milk, what does the milk do? Puts you to sleep. If you are on the milk experience, and you are knowingly on the milk experience, when you should be on the strong meat experience, you are going to be sleeping. But Christ is knocking at the door, and if you are found sleeping, will you hear Jesus Christ knock at the door, my brothers and sisters? Why? Because people on the milk experience are what? dull of hearing, and they will not hear him. They will miss the call from Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters. So we need to be on the strong meat experience, our senses exercised to discern good from evil, our ears and our eyes and our hearts open to Jesus Christ. So I close with these last two quotes from Spirit of Prophecy. Next slide. Testimonies to the church. Volume 2, page 205, paragraph 2. Jesus 
has left us this warning. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest suddenly he what? He find you sleeping. The church of God is required to fulfill her night watch. If we are serving milk in the church, my brothers and sisters, we are putting the people to sleep. And are we fulfilling our night watch, my brothers and sisters? No, we need to be awake, fulfill the night watch, proclaiming the three angels' messages. Let's keep reading. The church of God is required to fulfill her night watch. However perilous, whether long or short, sorrow is no excuse for her to be less watchful. Tribulation should not lead to what? Carelessness, but to double vigilance. Christ has directed the church by his own example to the source of their strength in times of need, distress, and peril. Do we need to be proclaiming the three angels' messages, my brothers and sisters? Proclaiming to the light of the world, evangelizing, giving people the sincere milk, the strong meat, and the honey experience. Next slide. Gospel workers. Spirit of Prophecy, page 148, paragraph 1. Ministers should present the sure word of prophecy as what? The foundation of faith of seven-day Adventists. What did Revelation chapter 10, verse 11 say? We must what? Prophesy again. The prophecies of Daniel and Revelation should be carefully studied in connection with the words, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We must prophesy again, but we must not forget the context of the prophecies, because it is the revelation of who? The revelation of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Those are the honey books, my brothers and sisters. Daniel and Revelation prophesy again because Jesus is coming soon. So today's message is a challenge for us, my brothers and sisters. All of us who have been baptized, are we ready to prophesy again? If you have never taught Sabbath school, I'm looking at you. Your turn is coming up. Are you ready to give people the sincere milk, the strong meat, and the honey experience? Let us remember that Jesus is coming soon as we prepare each other for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.